Okay, this is a first for me. I've never done this before on my channel. I'm going to talk about another sports YouTuber. I'm going to talk about Steve Dangle and his channel, The Steve Dangle Podcast. Um, he was one of the first sports YouTubers who does what I do, similar kind of content, uh, but he is solely on the Toronto Maple Leafs. He is solely a, a fan channel. And I don't normally subscribe to fan channels. I subscribe to one or two, but I don't normally view them. I don't really watch them. I try and stay fan neutral. I've only done a couple of videos on teams I support. I haven't done loads of videos on, on I've done no videos on Blackburn Rovers. I've done one video on the Canberra Raiders. I've done one video on the Winnipeg Jets. And I've done a few videos on my local life team, the Bracknell Beats. I haven't done loads of content on teams I support. I, I've, I've deliberately done that as a deliberate thing so I can be less biased. I want to be a neutral channel where I can discuss what I see on the pitch or on the ice rink or on the court or on the racetrack. I want to be as neutral as possible. So I can be as balanced as possible and they give, get, therefore give an opinion that is not swayed by I enjoyed this team or that team. Steve Dangle is a Maple Leafs fan in Toronto. Um, so he's going to have that bias. But he's different to the mainstream media in a way that I like. He does it from a fan's point of view. He's very energetic and enthusiastic about how he does it as well. And he's full of, he's just, he's fun to watch. He never sits still. He's very fun to watch. And I'm getting a bit annoyed with the mainstream media because it, it portrays certain fan bases in a bad light. It portrays certain teams in a bad light, which is unnecessary. And it, and it sometimes goes after person's hacks, after play, individual players, individual managers. And I know I've been critical of players on this channel, our managers on this channel. I have as well. We all can do it. But it's the way the media writes, sometimes falsehoods, complete and utter vile falsehoods about certain individuals in sport. Journalism at the moment is very toxic. Sports journalism is, is going down the same way as regular, the other 95% of the newspaper, or the other 90% of a news website. It is getting toxic, and I don't like it. But people like Steve Dangle, and there are other channels I subscribe to as well, but people like Steve Dangle make it fun. I'm not sure if I've subscribed to him at the moment, but I have subscribed to him in the past. Um, I haven't watched a lot of his content lately, which is a shame. But he keeps coming up in my recommended videos. So I will actually occasionally, you know, because I'm not a Maple Leafs fan, so I don't want to subscribe to a Maple Leafs fan channel because that will be silly. Um, but I, it does come in my recommended videos, and I will watch occasionally a Steve Dangle podcast. I'll go, yeah, I'll watch that. I've watched all his stuff on Sportsnet. It's 100 Days of the NHL. And that was a brilliant series of videos. Um, absolutely brilliant. Um... He was so good at his, his podcast, his his own channel that Sportsnet found him and said said to him, We'll do we'll do we'll give you a deal. You work for us part time. You can keep your YouTube channel, but you can can you do a segment a series of segments for us? And he did, and it was brilliant. It was well watched, well received, and, and hockey fans loved it because it was from a fan's point of view. It was not a media's point of view, it was a fan's point of view. It was someone who goes to the games pays their money, watches their team win or lose, is emotionally involved with their team winning or losing. That's why people bought into it. Steve Dang was the complete opposite to what Logan Paul was. Logan Paul did more damage to YouTube and content makers like us than I think any other YouTuber has done before or since, or will since. Steve Dang was what you want to aspire to be, and that's what I want to aspire to be, so Steve Dang. Um... And if it wasn't people like Steve Dangle and other channels as well, there are other YouTubers, um, I don't think I would be as good as I am now with the content I, I do and how I present it. Um, if it wasn't looking at how they do it, looking at the energy they put in and the effort and the joy they get out of it, I don't think I would be as good as I am. And I'm a very, I'm a baby channel. I'm tiny. I am, my new Steve Dangle is actually making a lot of money. Me, um, I'm demonetized again, so I'm trying to get back to a thousand subscribers and four thousand hours of view time. And it's tough. The early stages of a channel, the first, at the embryonic stages can be tough. Some channels do really well for get-go. It took me a long time to get monetized, and I only stayed monetized for a brief period. And then, because of the rule changes, I've, I've lost my income as of nine days ago. It's tough. But, I've grown quicker. Since, since I've been demonetized, I've actually grown quicker than I was growing when I was monetized. Um, in, in nine days I've gained 
a fair few subscribers and my view counts have gone up. So it's a double edged sword. It's hit and miss. We I don't know what the future holds, but if I can be half as decent as Steve Dangle, I think I've done well. But that's a YouTuber I admire and, and, and if you are got a channel and you follow me and you want to make content, check out Steve Dangle's podcast. And even if you don't like the Toronto Maple Leafs, just see how he does it. And I think you can learn a lot. He is one of the wittiest, funniest sports YouTubers I've come across. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'll have some more videos for you soon.